So we will continue uh, our discussion of the idea of how to combine an alternating component of stress with a mean uh, a component of the stress and predict uh, the fatigue lifetime or the fact of safety. Uh, so uh, we, uh, the last thing we've discussed is that you have to consider also the fatigue stress concentration factor and this fatigue uh, stress concentration factor would be uh, applied uh, to your design. So we will move on from here and uh, look at uh, the uh, uh, possibility of having um, the uh, alternating and the mean stress as uh, ways of uh, uh, how to combine them to predict uh, failure. So the idea is that if we just take the ratio of the alternating uh, divided by, uh, suppose we take the endurance limit, uh, this is a fraction that tells us how far we are uh, from uh, the material failing um, uh, by the if, we, if the alternating stress is close to the endurance limit. So let's call this uh, D1. And then if we have a mean component of the stress, sigma mean, and we ratio this to the yield strength of the material, then we would consider this as a fraction indicating how close we are to yielding. Now, if we have uh, both alternating and a mean stress, then we can combine these linearly or nonlinearly, depends on the data. But if we suppose we combine them linearly, uh, for example, D1 plus D2, uh, that should give us an indication that we should not exceed 100% uh, under any conditions. So that's basically the idea of how to combine the alternating and the mean stress in some fashion. So there's a variety of ways to do this com combination, and the variety of ways are actually uh, dependent on uh, how we would interpret uh, the experimental data. So what I'll, uh, I'll uh, discuss here is uh, different methods to combine both the alternating and the mean stress and then use that uh, in a particular design. Uh, so let's uh, first look at the first method uh, in, in this approach. And the first method is uh, that we'll discuss is called the modified Goodman method. And in modified Goodman method, we would combine both of them in such a way that uh, we would have sigma alternating divided by S endurance, for example, uh, plus sigma mean divided by S ultimate. Uh, strength of the material should be equal to one. This will be our uh, criterion for uh, adding the damages. Uh, however, if we consider that uh, the sigma mean is ratio to the ultimate, then there's a potential possibility that the total stress, which is sigma alternating plus sigma mean, the sum of these two, uh, can exceed the yield point. If it exceeds the yield point, then this can raise some questions. And uh, therefore, the modified Goodman has to consider a possibility that it should not exceed, the sum of these two should not exceed the yield point. So the idea here is that we want to, first I'm going to show you uh, a diagram and this diagram illustrates how you combine uh, the alternating with the mean and not exceed uh, the yield the strength of the material under any conditions and then we will talk about uh, instead of uh, using a diagram we will use equations which would be much easier to use because we can always either program them or use them on our calculator so here in, uh, in this diagram, you see that I have, uh, we're going to plot uh, the uh, mean stress on the abscissa, and um, we will plot all other components of the stress on the uh, ordinate. Uh, so if we, for example, want to plot uh, the mean stress versus the mean stress, it will be a 45 degree line which is right here. So this is the mean stress 
as a function of the mean stress. Yeah, so that's very easy to understand. And now if we add to that mean stress uh, an alternating comp uh, stress, so we add a plus alternating and a minus alternating, then we will produce two lines. One line that is the maximum, because the maximum is the mean plus the alternating, and the other line is not parallel to it, is, is the minimum, with, because this is the mean minus the alternating. Now these will go up to uh, when the mean is zero, that's for fully reverse, and you can see here for fully reverse, the uh, maximum is equal to the minimum, but with a negative sign. When we go to the compressive stress uh, range, uh, these two should remain parallel because we are uh, finding from the data that the mean stress doesn't have any effect on uh, fatigue strength uh, if it is compressive. So there's no problem. We can just kind of ignore it. And therefore, this will remain parallel in the compressive range. In the tensile range, uh, the key point is that this maximum stress, at some point, if it is large enough, it can actually cross the yield strength of the material. You can see the yield strength is right here. So the maximum, if it is very large, it can cross that yield strength uh, on the first cycle, essentially because uh, in modified Goodman, the sum is allowed to go all the way to the ultimate if needed. And therefore, uh, we have to set a limit uh, on the maximum. And that limit is this constant straight line here. So that's the maximum possible for the maximum stress to be not to exceed the yield. Once we set that limit, then we can determine the intersection point here, which is S yield on the mean uh, stress uh, axis, and it's also as sealed on the maximum. And then we would be able to also find the coordinates of this point, which is uh, less than as sealed. This can be computed. And then it is equal to as sealed on the, uh, on the vertical axis. So this um, shape here is where we have the design space. Uh, so the, the mid-range stress will be here, the maximum will be determined by the top line, and then in this region here we have uh, to be careful and not to design outside uh, the, um, uh, the, the yield stress. So this is uh, uh, a graphical way uh, to represent um, the design on the modified Goodman uh, diagram. Another uh, method for uh, design is also graphical, and the graphical method is called the master fatigue diagram. And in this method, just similar to the modified Goodman, we want to plot the mean stress and the alternating stress, and we want to plot the minimum stress and the maximum stress, and then we want to show how they are related uh, and use it in design. So in this case, uh, what you'll see here is that I have, um, I plot, I essentially plot uh, the, um, uh, I have uh, on this uh, horizontal axis, I plot now the minimum stress, and then on the vertical axis, I plot the maximum stress. So I have the maximum stress here and the minimum stress here. And then um, if you will see here, let me just move this outside. So if you see right here, uh, I can plot the mid-range stress, which is a 45 degree line because the mid-range stress, which is the mean, is the sum of the maximum and minimum divided by two. And uh, on this, uh, I can also have another 45 degree line and the negative, a minus 45 degrees uh, or 135 degree. This is the alternating stress because this is the difference between the maximum and minimum divided by two. So now I have a space which are these two axes, the mean and the alternating, very similar to the modified Goodman. So if you uh, 
look at here, the modified Goodman, I used to have the mean here, sigma m, and also now the alternating. So now if you look at the master uh, curve for fatigue design, this is your sigma mean, and this is the sigma alternating. And so you're looking at it with a, um, a rotation of 45 degrees. Okay, so if we have the two of them together, uh, then the experimental data can be plotted such that uh, we, can, we have to design inside this curve, and this is for 10 to the 6 cycles, inside the, the, that curve for 10 to the 5, and then 10 to the 4, and so on. So this can be a result of a lot of experimental data where the combination for any design point, like A here, has to be, we have to have a mean value and you have to have an alternating value and it should be uh, below the, uh, the, the experimental data so that you have a safe design. So these are kind of some of the um, uh, methods that have been used uh, in the past and these methods have been uh, successful uh, yeah, for uh, past designs, but uh, we can get the same information if we uh, use uh, algebraic equations. And that's what we will do next, is that we would like to uh, find algebraic equations to combine the damage fraction due to the mean stress to the damage fraction due to the alternating and then add them up together in some kind of fashion here. And uh, what we will do is um, we, uh, before we move on to, to this, we want to continue our discussion of what's happening when you have an alternating component versus the mean component. So sigma mean is here, sigma alternating is here. Uh, all right, so if I just uh, want to uh, find the relationship that is called the modified Goodman relationship, which is sigma alternated divided by SE plus uh, sigma mean divided by S ultimate equals to 1. This is the equation of a straight line uh, if you have the sigma mean on this axis and sigma alternating on the vertical axis. That will give us uh, a straight line equation and the straight line is going to be uh, represented here where the intersection with the horizontal is at the ultimate stress and the intersection with the vertical is at the yield, uh, uh, at the uh, endurance limit. So this line is sigma alternating over SE plus sigma mean over SUT is equal to 1. Now the problem that we discussed before in uh, the modified Goodman is that there is kind of a, a range here that's kind of dangerous and this range is when the, uh, we want it to guard against the maximum stress uh, not to exceed the yield. That's why we had to cut it off right here. So we don't want to go here. We don't want to go to the yield. And uh, uh, instead of using the modified Goodman uh, construction, which is, you know, takes some work to do this construction, then an easier way is to use the so-called Langer line. And the Langer line is a line that has a connection uh, between the yield point of the material on the horizontal and the vertical. And it tells us that under any condition, under any circumstances, whenever we have the mean and the alternating, they should the sum should not be exceeding the yield point. In other, in other words, the Langer line uh, is a line where we are, uh, if we add up the damage due to the alternating to the damage due to the mean, the sum of these two damage should not exceed the yield point, and it should be expressed in this form. So we would express it as sigma alternating over S yield plus sigma mean over S yield must not be equal to greater than 1. So this is uh, a check that uh, both the alternating and the mean, if you add them together, uh, the sum is going to be the maximum 
and it should not exceed the yield point. So we have to, under all conditions, we have to be below the Langer line here uh, when we combine the alternating and uh, the mean. Uh, so if you look here, you see that there is a, a region of danger right here because it's possible that we exceed uh, the, um, uh, I'm sorry, so let's uh, backtrack here. There is a region of danger uh, that we exceed uh, the yield point right here because in this region um, it's possible that uh, the sum of the mean and the alternating, or the sum of the mean and alternating will be such that the sigma max can exceed the SEO. So it is possible in this region here. So what we need to do is find the intersection point here and then make sure that our design does not go into this region where the maximum uh, exceeds uh, the yield point. So this region is very similar or pretty much the same as the modified Goodman, but if you look at it here, it would be uh, the modified Goodman is if we don't apply any limit, then we would get into this regime here. But applying the limit, we are kind of limited to the regime. So uh, let's just uh, continue here and uh, have our discussion uh, in, the, in the way that uh, uh, we are able to determine now the, uh, the combination of the uh, mean stress and uh, the alternating stress and how they can be added. So I'm going to see if um, we can move on to the next section and in the next section we're we will be able to uh, do some examples.